what are our political points and why are politicians and partisan reporters always trying to score them? If you've watched politics for more than a few moments, you've probably heard the phrase scoring political points. But if you try to understand that in the way points work in sports, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's go back to the science. In the 1970s, a study was done on the two major political parties in the United States, the Republicans and the Democrats. What they found was that over 90% of all campaign and propaganda materials were directed at members of their own party or people who already agreed with them, not swing voters or opposition voters. Essentially, they were not trying to convince or persuade anyone they were right. So why were they spending so much time and money on people who already agreed with them. And that's where we're going to get into the political points. So let's break down the electorate to kind of understand how this works, because these numbers are important to understanding why it is so important for these news organizations and politicians to score these points. In the 2020 election, 60% of the eligible population in the United States voted in that election. That is the largest percentage on record and possibly the largest group ever in the history of the United States. But it is still only two-thirds. Another piece of data that is also relevant. Fewer and fewer people register for political parties, but people still tend to be consistent in how they vote, the party and policies they vote for. Essentially, they agree with one party or another, but they don't want to be officially affiliated with them. In the 2020 election, we had 155 million people vote, but there were 168 million voters. That's 13 million people who took the time to register to vote, but didn't show up to the polls or do any kind of mail-in voting. So once again, taking it down from our two-thirds, right, where we were of eligible, you know, people who voted in this election, we still have this other large group of people who went through the time and energy to register, but never bothered to show up. And this is with the best turnout in U.S. history. We go to any other presidential election, and it's worse. And what the political parties have learned is that it is far more important to get the people who already agree with them to vote than it is to try and convince new people to agree with them and then convince those people to show up and vote. It just takes a lot less energy, and it costs a lot less money, and it works a lot more often convincing those who already agree with them to show up. And this is where political points come in, and there are essentially four types of points that they are trying to score. And all of these are about motivating people. Now, before we get any further, if these kinds of things interest you, and you are interested in the deeper details of how corporations political and news organizations use propaganda, then you might be interested in my series. Now, this is a historical spy thriller series, but it's very focused and contains a lot of details about some of the most potent propaganda moments in history, along with key studies and how they are now used to influence large groups of people. So you can get it in paperback, Kindle, even audio. Now, let's get back to it. First kind of point is something that excites the people about the political party and its policies and makes them want to go out and vote for the party. It energizes them in a positive way. Two, it makes them afraid of the opposition, and that fear motivates them to get to the voting booth. Three, it makes people angry, and angry people vote. Four, it takes something people are unhappy about and blames it on the opposition. And you want to get back up happy, you have to vote for us. But political points are bigger than just showing up on election day. It ignites these emotions in people, and then they are more, li- more likely to donate to the political parties. They're more likely to buy products that support the party, like hats, shirts, stickers. It motivates people to take part in protests and rallies and writing campaigns. Some of them go on to become missionaries for the political party. And that is where more people are converted to a political party. So many of these missionaries for these political parties do it poorly and just anger those around them, right? It has become a running joke about, you know, a family member at a holiday bringing up politics and getting everybody angry and being in their face about it. But that is about the effectiveness of these political points. It is motivating these people to become evangelists for the policies and politics they believe in. Now, for all of those people who just make people angry by bringing up politics, there are those that are persuasive, 
eloquent and effective who bring new members into the party, and that is also a product of effectively scoring these points. So if you turn on any partisan news channel or you hear politicians talking or reading their tweets, you will see them trying to score these points with their own base. They often do this by picking out the silliest or most extreme things happening on the other side. A great example of this is how often CNN talked about Obama's certificate because it was silly and ridiculous and had no evidence. It made Republicans look disconnected from reality and silly. They scored points by essentially saying, you don't want idiots in power. Conversely, Fox News briefly, barely covered it because it didn't resonate with the viewers. It didn't score enough points, if any. And so they moved on, right? They're far more likely to pick out extreme policies or laws. You know, they will focus on hiring practices in companies that are, you know, have expressed to be liberal or democratic and where they're refusing to hire white people because that speaks to pointing out the ridiculousness, the silliness of the opposition or making people afraid and angry that, you know, they're going to be racist. Both sides are constantly engaging in scoring these points because it works. And because if they don't, fewer people that already agree with them show up and vote and take place in the other elements that grant these political parties their power. Those are the four elements of scoring political points and why the news often looks so silly and ridiculous as they try to score points against each other. Write in the comments. What do you think? What have you experienced? What are some of the great stories you've seen from either side that break down into these pieces? Let me know.